when you have something like a code, like a codex, uh, it's like an encrypted text from ancient times uh, and things like that, it's supposed to hold all kinds of secrets. Um, you need basically um, a way to decode that information in order for you to actually use the codex. And so, for example, uh, the ancient art, uh, Egypt, Egyptians used these hieroglyphs, and until until a certain period of time, nobody knew how to read them until an actual code was found that translated those hieroglyphs into other languages, and allowed uh, or a language that we knew of, which allowed us to actually uh, translate from that point on. So, what we need to understand the genetic cross patterns is something similar to that. A codex to help us figure out what we need to know. And now I want to show you this now. Now this is a Word document file that's actually available on the notes and handouts on my website on the Lima Files and SkyDrive which will teach you everything you need to know about genetic patterns and you can use this to decode any kind of word problem if you actually understand what's happening there. Now, what, what I'm, what, I'm going to walk you through it so you can actually see what to do. And I'm hoping that you will be able to see in this video. If not, I suggest that you open this document and follow along with it. Uh, the first column will tell you the type of cross that we're referring to. Then, then we will give you the specific cross that we're talking about because there's two types. Two, Two, two breeding crosses and two F2 crosses, so I had to create those two columns. Then this refers to the genotypes, then phenotypes, uh, word problem decodings, and then other general notes about that cross. Now, on the genotype, I'm using a code that's basically like this. Uh, I will give you the homozygous dominant, the heterozygous, and then the he homozygous recessive genotype ratios in that order. And I even put here the code of what that means. You know, big A, big A means homozygous dominant, little A, little A, big A, little A means heterozygous, and then little A, little A means homozygous recessive. And that is the order in which I will give you any uh, information. So, for example, um, you see here, that whenever you have a cross, the, the progenitors of the P of, of the homozygous dominant versus homozygous dominant cross are both, there's two homozygous dominants. So that's what that's saying. Obviously, no heterozygous, no homozygous. And that's pretty much how it is, right? But when you come to the P cross, you have one homozygous dominant, one homozygous recessive. So you have a 50 50 of each. And so I am giving you both the ratios of genotypes. And a count of genotypes on uh, you know, out of out of two for progenitors because there's only always two parents. Now, when offspring side, you do the same thing except the count is out of four. One uh, because the the phenotype the, the Punnett square is usually four. Now, so as, as you can see, the true breeding cross will be 100% homozygous dominant, and you're going to have four out of the four being like that. So that's pretty much what this is telling you. And then you actually have the phenotype. Since all of you guys were going to have the dominant genotype, they're all going to look dominant, the progenitors, and so will the offspring. So what that's saying is that both parents look the same, the childs all look the same, the children look the same, all everybody looks dominant, and the ratios of the parents match the ratios of the children. All right? And remember, this is the one method that you can use to determine if the genotype of a dominant phenotype. Because if you self-cross something that looks dominant with itself, and it always makes itself, you know that the, the unknown genotype was dominant. Now, for the homozygous recessive true breeding cross, it's exactly the same thing, except the, the parents look the same, the children look the same, uh, the children look the same as the parents, but all look recessive. And again, the genotype ratios of parents and children both match. All right now for the p cross you know it's supposed to be a fit one parent is dominant one homozygous dominant one pair pair is homozygous recessive so if you got 50 percent homozygous dominant 50 percent homozygous recessive on the parents but all the children are going to be hybrids or heterozygous and you're going to have the 0 4 0 ratio because we're going to have four heterozygous which means although the progenitors are half and half 100% of the progen of the of the, of the of the hybrids are are um, are going to be do the, the dominant. Now, 
when it comes to hybrids, anytime you see a hybrid, I'm actually going to start breaking it down to the different types of dominance. Now, in this case, if it's complete dominance, everybody looks dominant, the dominant look. But if it's incomplete dominant, everybody will have the hybrid look. If it's co-dominant, everybody here will have both looks at once. Now, the interesting thing about this cross is that parents both look different. One is a dominant, one is obsessive, but children all look the same. And the children look like dominant parents if it's complete dominance, right? If it's complete dominance. So, uh, in complete dominance, they both look like the parents. So, in other words, in complete dominance, the children will look like, like, the, par like the dominant parents, right? It's incomplete dominance, the children look like, not, like, not look like either parent. And then in co-dominance, the children look like both parents at the same time. And this, remember, is the best cross, cross to show who's the dominant. Now, on the F1 cross, you're going to have, uh, it's or the filial cross, you're going to have two heterozygouses, which are the children of this generation crossing with each other, so 100% heterozygouses. And then you're going to have children, which are one-to-one -one ratio in genotype. So 25% homozygous dominant, 25% heterozygouses, and then you're going to get 25% um, homozygous recessive. Which means the parents are all dominant in complete dominance. And in incomplete dominance, they're all hybrids. And in co-dominance, they, they are all, they all have look like both parents. Now the children, if it's complete dominance, will have a, a three to one ratio in, genot in, in genotype where three look dominant and 25% look dominant, 25% look recessive. But in inc incomplete dominant, 25% will look dominant, 50% will look hybrid, and 25% will look recessive because you have that new look for the hybrids that you generated. The same ratios are applied for co-dominance, except that they on the, on the hybrid, it looks like both at the same time. Now, what it means for word problems, in all of them, it doesn't matter what dominance you're looking for, for it, parents all look the same, and the parents all look, look um, dominant. And the parents will look dominant on the complete dominance. The parents will look hybrid on the incomplete dominance. And in co-dominance, the parents will look like both. And that's the, that's, the, that's the difference between them. Now, and then three out of the four children will look like the parents. One out of the four children will do not look like the, parent in, like the parents in the incomplete dominance. In incomplete dominance, two out of the four children look like the parents. But then two out of the, out of the four children do not look like the parents. And the other interesting fact is the other interesting fact that in, in the incomplete dominance, two of the children will look like the parents, two of the children do not look like the parents, but those two children do not look like each other. Because that's the dominant recessive that do not look like the parents, which are the hybrid look. The same thing is true about co-dominance. Now remember that this is the best trait to show the return of the recessive after that is appearing after the P cross, which is the best cross to prove the law of segregation. Then we have the, the F2 crosses, which are the, the and you have two types, the dominant type F2 cross and then the test cross. The dominant type F2 cross is big A. Now, one thing that these all of these F2 crosses will share in common is that the ratio of parent and children will always match, right? But they are di slightly different. The dominant type will have 50% dominant, 50% uh, heterozygous parents, so one, one. And then the children will also match that, so you're going to get two of each. And in, in that case, in complete dominance, 100% of the parents will look dominant. But in incomplete dominance, 50% will have the hybrid look and 50% will have the dominant look. So see how incomplete dominance changes everything. The same thing is true for co-dominance, instead you get, instead, but you get both looks. In incomplete dominance, you're going to get 100% of the, ch of the children look dominant. But in incomplete dominance, the ratios like will match the parents. So ratios always match the ratios of the parents, except it changes for the complete dominance or not. Now, that means in complete dominance, the parents look the same and the parents look dominant, and all the children look like the parents. But in incomplete dominance, the parents actually look different. One looks dominant, looks look, one looks like a hybrid, and two out of the four children look like one parent, and two of the other children look like the other parent. All right? And the same thing is true for co-dominance. Now, this cannot be used as a test cross because you can't differentiate between, two, two dom uh, between the genotypes and in the case of the complete dominance in this case. Now, in the test cross is actually when you have, you cross the hybrid with the recessive, the homozygous recessive. You get one of each, and then you do the state, you're gonna get ratios which match those ratios in the child. Okay, this is actually a typo there. Now, 
what in complete dominance that means you get a 50 50 look in this case you're actually going to get a 50 50 look in all of them the difference is that what the 50 percent look is now you're always going to get a 50 percent recessive but in complete dominance you look 50 percent dominant in incomplete dominance to uh the parents one of the parents looks hybrid and in co-dominance one of the parents looks like both at the same time and the children of course will match those ratios which means the parents will look different in all of the of these different versions of, of no matter what the dominant relationship is and no matter what the relationship is two out of the four children look like one parent and two out of the four children will look like the other parent the only difference is wh whether that's going to be looked as dominant hybrid or or both but always you're going to have uh, that situation now now this is basically what happens in all of the crosses now on the next few pages you, what, what you have is information on how to do that information depending on what the word problem will give you. And that can be very useful. Now, I also want you to notice that the dominance patterns only affects the phenotype. Look at that. The genotype is not really disturbed by the dominance patterns. You see, you're still going to have the same genotype ratios, right? But the phenotype ratio will change depending on the actual dominant relationship. So notice that... that with the exception, of course, of the dominant type uh, cross that will disrupt the genotype. Uh, um, sorry, I got confused there for a second. It will never disrupt the genotype ratio. The genotype ratio will stay the same. The dominance feature only plays a factor when you're talking about type ratios, right? Obvious. The, and the other thing is that the dominance type, the type of dominance does not affect the true breeding cross patterns or the P cross patterns. But it changes the offspring of the P cross in all the parts of F1 and F2 crosses. So what what I mean that is that true breeders will always make the same thing no matter what. So that the, the dominance relationship makes do, doesn't doesn't do anything to true breeding crosses. But the parents of the P cross are also not affected by dominant relationships because they're going to be pure breeders. But from then point on, everything changes depending on the dominant relationship. And so you need to know that as well. Now, on the next video, I'm going to look to tell you how to use this document to decipher a word problem to see what kind of cross the word problem is talking about. And as we do that, we're also going to discuss all the different types of genetic word problems which are out there.